Hello, I'm George Hibernensis. Viewers, today I'm going to tell you about the origins of the American Civil War for A-level history. This is carrying on from the 1850 Compromise, which I covered in a previous video. Um, so we know that the American Civil War broke out in April 1861, and what was happening in the decade leading up to it? What were the issues which eventually uh, caused the Civil War? Uh, we know that slavery is a key issue, we've discussed that previously, and I'll return to that indeed as uh, more things crop up. Tariffs in the 1850s uh, were also a tendentious uh, issue. Northerners tended want to want to have tariffs and Southerners usually didn't. Now let me elucidate what are tariffs. That's an import tax to make it more expensive for people in your country to buy goods from abroad and therefore encourage people from your country to buy goods that are manufactured or produced at home. Um, but if a country erects this tariff barrier, as in charging an import tax, trade competitors will retaliate by taxing your exports and making it more expensive for people abroad to buy your exports, thereby encouraging their own people to buy home-produced uh, products. Um, we know that uh, the northern states had more factories. Having said that, it's important to recognize that more people were farmers than factory workers in the northern states. Anyway, the northern manufacturing interests which tended to want tariffs that couldn't quite compete with uh, Western European countries. Western Europe was the only other industrialized area of the world. Outside Europe and North America, there were very few factories. And in Europe, it was mainly Western Europe which had the factories. The southern part of the United States, again, had very few factories at that stage. Whereas um, the uh, key southern export was cotton. They did export other things, such as um, tobacco, for example, to a small extent, sugar and rice. Uh, let me see. So southerners generally wanted free trade with Europe. That was the most important region of the world for them in terms of trade. Uh, more states were being admitted to the Union. Uh, Minnesota in 1858 as a free state, which is to say it's a state that did not permit slavery. Oregon in 1859, a free state. Kansas in 1860, uh, again, is a free state. Um, although it was passed, the, the act to incorporate Kansas into the United States, Kansas didn't officially join until 1861. Again, this was tipping the balance of power in the Senate more and more towards the North and indeed towards anti-slavery. Remember, there are two senators per state, regardless of that state's population. Uh, so that was a controversial question. Expansion to the West as part of Manifest Destiny. If American settlers were living in land previously ruled by Native Americans, if these settlers formed themselves into territories, a territory and applied to join the United States, should they be allowed in as a free state or as a slave state? Um, the Republican Party was founded in the 1850s, and um, they argued that um, it was right that Congress would not allow slavery in any other territories, and any state allowed to join the United States must be a free state only. Um, Stephen A. Douglas was a Democratic senator from um, Illinois, and he spoke of popular sovereignty, which said that people in a territory should be allowed to decide whether they would allow slavery or not. It was certainly an internal matter. It's fascinating that this is often was often regarded as an issue of uh, local rights and what people in that particular area wanted, not human rights. Um, some people didn't recognize, or many people didn't recognize, that slavery is an abomination, that it's just outright immoral. Um, the satanic cruelty of slavery was being brought home to people by some um, abolitionist publicity. Um, and as for popular sovereignty, nobody was asking the slaves, do these uh, unfortunate African-American people want to be treated so abysmally? Well, of course they don't. Of course they prefer their freedom. Now, it was very dangerous for them to say that if they were um, at the mercy of some cruel white slave owners. Uh, another way of resolving things was the Calhoun Doctrine. Now, Dr. John C. Calhoun, who'd been a Southern politician, and he said states' rights States can do what they want. Federal law is more or less optional for each state. It was going back to the older idea that uh, the federal government should have minimum power and states should have a very wide degree of autonomy. Jefferson Davis uh, was a politician from the South and he was one who advocated this Calhoun Doctrine. Um, I mentioned previously Uncle Tom's, Tom's Cabin, published in uh, 1852, 
and um, this was the this was the novel which brought home to um, a northern readership the horrible reality of slavery. Uh, perhaps some had willfully closed their eyes to just how ghastly it must be. And when the Civil War broke out, President Lincoln met Harriet Beecher Stowe. She was the authoress of Uncle Tom's Cabin, and he said to her, so you're the woman who wrote that book that caused this great war. In those days, they used great to mean big, not saying it was an excellent war. Um, Okay, another event which uh, precipitated uh, the American Civil War was um, John Brown's rebellion in 1859. John Brown was a white man who uh, was originally from Massachusetts. He would lived in the West for a while in Kansas, where a lot of pro and anti-slavery people were fighting each other. Um, he'd killed some um, pro-slavery people, and he believed it was on a mission from God. Slavery was an um, unmitigated evil and therefore it was a righteous cause to fight against it. And in 1859, he rented a farm in Virginia, which is a slave state, and he plotted a rebellion, hoping to inspire many slaves to rise up and claim their freedom. It would been a glorious chapter in American history if it had come right, and unfortunately it didn't, and uh, it was defeated by um, the local militia, like National Guard in Virginia. Um, John Brown, he'd uh, taken over a railway station, wanted to seize Harper's Ferry. Ironically, the first person they killed accidentally was a black man who was free. Anyway, so he was captured. He was put on trial, charged with treason to the state of Virginia, uh, even though he wasn't actually from Virginia, but he was there at the moment when he led this uh, insurrection. He'd only had a few followers, mostly white, some of them his sons, and he was publicly hanged. Uh, and um, he was unrepentant at the end, convinced he'd done something that was entirely morally justified. And he said, uh, the sins of this guilty land will not be washed away, but with much blood. Prophetic words, given that the um, civil war was going to soon start. One of those who'd watched his uh, execution was John Wilkes Booth, the man who later assassinated President Lincoln. So many Southerners said, oh, this is terrible, this is terrorism, what John Brown did, and other Northerners were complicit in this rebellion. The Republican Party felt obliged later to denounce it as the gravest of crimes, but some Northerners openly sympathised with what John Brown had done, recognised that he was a very good man, very admirable in trying to help slaves uh, win their emancipation. And a hymn was written, John Brown's body lies a moulding in, in the grave, but his truth goes marching on. Um, John Brown died that the slave might be free. I won't give you all the lyrics of it. And so people often sang that in church, and it put steel in the soul of abolitionists. So there, was, there were rising tensions. Some fire eaters in the South, particularly in South Carolina, were saying, let's break away from the United States because the Yankees, that's the Northerners, are going to um, deprive us of our right to deprive others of rights. There are various attempts to find a way out of this, the Crittenden Compromise, the Corwin Amendment, neither of them worked. There was the 1860 election, it was a three-sided election. In the end, um, Abraham Lincoln, who was um, a little-known senator from Illinois, he uh, was elected president. Um, and uh, let me see, it was um, Hannibal Hamlin was his vice president. Uh, so he was a Republican, a new party, and he said he wouldn't interfere with slavery where it already existed, but he would prevent it expanding to the West. Anyway, that wasn't good enough for some of the pro-slave extremists. South Carolina was the first to secede. You can read a song about it called um, The Bonnie Blue Flag, and it lists the states in order, those that um, broke away. Seven states uh, had declared that they were leaving the United States before Lincoln was even inaugurated. He was inaugurated on the 4th of March, 1861. In those days, presidential inaugurations always took place on the 4th of March. Nowadays, it's always 20th of January. Uh, South Carolina produced a long document as it promulgated its secession and stated its uh, reasons for leaving the United States. Other states uh, also uh, announced the grounds on which they had chosen to break away from the United States, and all of them mentioned slavery. Some people who are nostalgic for the Confederacy, they tried to claim it was about something other than human bondage, but it wasn't. It was um, about trying to keep other people in servitude. That was the overwhelming reason for it. The other reasons were quite trivial um, in the grand scheme of things. So um, 
it wasn't clear what this was really going to happen. Was this just all hot air? Virginia initially voted against secession, then voted again and chose to secede. Um, anyway, so I suppose the, the last few weeks of the run-up to the Civil War, I could look at those causes in another video.